Hey, what's up? My name is Jacek and in this video I'm going to break down the razor blade ad I did using VFX. In case you haven't seen it, here it goes. Most of it was done using After Effects, there is one shot that was done in Blender. Uh, I'm not going to break down this part, but all of the other stuff, let's do it. So the first shot is really simple. I put the laptop on a Lazy Susan. If you don't know what it is, it's just an electric rotating table. I basically set the focus point on the keyboard. I set the focus speed to, I think, was normal. I have the A7 III. And as the laptop revealed the keyboard, the camera focused, and because it's an RGB keyboard, it gave it a really cool effect from Boca to a focus. Then the same deal, I had the light on the... Actually, this is a flipped shot. It was on the right. The flow was better for me, so I flipped the shot. Anyway, I had the light on one side. The laptop was turning from away from the light towards the light and it gave it that cool effect. And this is not an original razor uh, blade texture. This is a D brand, really cool skin and, it, and the laptop doesn't get as dirty. The next shot was a simple zoom in, but I did have some blue screen right here and I just used a key light to extract it. Nothing big and I have a simple scale keyframe going on in here. Okay, so in the next shot, there is a lot going on. So let's start with my main shot. As you can see, it was just a simple room, really small, and it was an additional challenge because the light was spilling everywhere. There was tons of improvised covers and there is a blue screen right here. It helped a little bit, but as you can see, everything almost had to be masked and <laughs> this is my wife who was in fact pulling off my hat during the explosion it's actually really funny but well, you can see that is how i got the hat off during explosion so yeah that's also curious um out of everything that's in this shot this is the only real part so then we have the background which is just some random stock image I found on Unsplash and it served me really well as a background. I just had to find an image that would kind of fit the perspective and in terms of what's behind me. But I did some adjustments with Lumetri Color and Gaussian Blur, made it a 3D as well as all of the other layers and there you go. We have our background and What's important, we have depth when we're moving in or out. So let's see if I can... So as you can see, this is the custom view. This is the main shot. Behind it, this is a background. And because it's further away, it, when you're zooming the camera in, there is a parallax effect. So that's really handy if you have a really, really small set, just like I did, to create that depth, especially when zooming out rapidly. Also, because the hat didn't exactly went out of the shot how I wanted to, up until a certain moment when my hat's pulled off is the actual hat, but then I have masked version of that layer. And you, as you can see, I think right about here, yeah exactly right from here. I'm replacing the actual hat with just a still frame and animated off of the frame. I also keyframe the exposure so it goes darker and darker the further it goes from the shot. Perfect. The next two shots look like this. That's just me holding up the mug 
In the beginning, I have just a stationary version, freeze frame with the shadow. Then I cut out with masks, just the mug. And here there is a still frame and I'm animating this still frame manually. And I had to increase the uh, composition size because I zoomed out a lot and it had to not disappear in the shot. Hope that's clear. And with the pot, it's exactly the same story. I made a mistake when grabbing this, so I had to manually replace that small part. So yeah, that's me right there. And just lifting it, I had to erase my fingers. That's the same story. It's just a freeze frame. And I also use the puppet pin tool just to give the branches a little bit of lag comparing to the actual base. So it sells it just a little bit more. I don't think that's necessarily visible, but just in case, that's how I did it. And of course, there's a track where I had that small part over my fingers. To control the camera, I use the Handycam plugin. It's super easy to use and I like using it in cases like this. Then we have a displacement using the chromatic displacement by, by Red Giant. And it's using a map I made that looks like this. First, it's a fractal noise. I added CC sphere on top of it, animated the sphere, added the Gaussian blur to make it a little bit less sharp. And then on top of that, I added radial blur. And then I used it as a displacement map and you can see it looks like a shockwave. Then I added just a little bit of glow to the logo using Optical Glow by Red Giant. I love this plugin. It looks really, really good and super easy to use. I masked just the part where the logo is and animated the Optical Glow. I added the expression to the logo. Really simple. If I set the value to zero, it's going to be zero. If it's anything else, I am setting it to be the wiggle expression. So it's going to flicker on and off until the explosion. Cool. Then I added a few plants just to add the depth to the shot. It's literally just a PNG image of a plant. I added a tint effect to it and the Gaussian blur to fake the depth of field. And it adds a nice depth to the shot when we're doing the zoom out. Then I had added another shockwave that looks like this. This is the same exact solid but duplicated and one is rotated in 3D just a little bit upwards so it gives it a little bit of depth. It's not perfect but it's so quick that you never notice it. It's a, literally a fractal noise with a few masks on it in the shape of a circle. And I animated these masks and yeah, then I used it as a displacement map. It's in the pre-composition and I blurred the whole pre-comp to make it less sharp. I added particular just a little bit during the explosion, but they're really, really subtle. They are barely visible, but they add a little bit of oomph to the explosion. And then on the very top, I added a little bit of flare using the No Light Factory. I believe this is from Red Giant as well. And yeah, this is the whole shot. The biggest challenge, of course, was that small room, but using some 3D layers and uh, 3D camera work, we were able to overcome that. Then we have that money shot. So I came up with the shot first, and then I came up with the whole concept of doing this ad. So this was done in Blender. So let's take a quick look at Blender. I'm sure most of you don't even know what's going on, but in short, this is the box where I would have my internals in. This is the camera and also the light because I was aiming for the Laowa Pro lens and that lens has the light in front of the lens, a LED light, and it's a macro lens. So I had my light at all times just where my camera is. So when I go inside of the camera view, I am going into that model and all of these elements were modeled by me. Then I added some texture, rendered it, and it came out looking like this. 
Here I drag the camera and created a title in 3D, really simple stuff. So the way I incorporated that shot was actually quite tricky because I had to be playing on the laptop and my wife helped me with that shot. I don't have a slider, which would be a lifesaver here. But what we did was we took a really slippery rug, put the camera on it, put it on autofocus and slowly pushed the camera towards the laptop. That final zoom was done in post. Of course, the motion blur helped to mask this movement a little bit. I created a small mask that I faded out to reveal the original shot from Blender and animated the shot a little bit so it matches the camera movement so it would integrate seamlessly. It's not perfect, but with some motion blur, it's not even that noticeable. So yeah, that's, that's this shot. The next shot is the rotating laptop. Again, on a Lazy Susan, I created a text using 3D camera tracker, created a reflection using the reflection from Red Giant, really handy. This is the original shot. There is a blue screen behind it. I had to remove the background because it didn't look really good <laughs> and I was in the shot, obviously. I just removed it using masks. I had to recreate the background somehow. So I just used a fractal noise with animated uh, evolution. These were my settings, added some levels just to manipulate the look a little bit, pulled down the whites, then added VC color vibrance. I love it. It's a free plugin. If you don't have it, go get it. It can cause some issues with After Effects. So if you're using it, save a lot. And then added just a little bit of Gaussian Blur. I used the same shot twice. And for each of these, I have a different title. I have a speed ramp in the end and in the beginning. And the text was displaced using this map. I have two fractal noise effects using basic and block, stretched them in the Y direction and animated brightness from 100% white to 100% black. Actually, this effect is from Video Copilot. In one of the tutorials, Andrew showed how to use displacement map to animate the text in a cool way. I used the Colorama plugin first to colorize these parts that weren't 100% of my final color. So basically everything that's fading in will be colored and it gives it that cool glitchy effect. Colorama takes some input colors and remaps them onto another ones, but you have a lot of options here. But anyway, then I have a set matte effect and it's taken from the also displacement map to not only displace it, but also fade it in. So it's using the luminance value from the same displacement map. So at the same time, we are animating the opacity from zero to 100, as well as displacement of that layer. So this is just the opacity, and this is combined with displacement. Then I have optical glow and a little bit of noise. And that's how I did these two shots. Then really, really similar to the previous one. The only thing I did differently was the color of the title. To create the RGB characters, actually I used the creative cow post from one of the users. His name is Dan Eberts. It was from really long time ago, but it's still working just fine. I tweaked it just a little bit to match my needs. You can see this is the original post and I use this expression. You, you can manipulate these values to change the RGB look. But yeah, that's that's what I did. Of course, the same deal with displacement map and set mat. I used a little bit of offset because the displacement map obviously moves it away from the original position and to make it fit just where I want it to be, I use the offset effect and then some optical glow and the reflection. To create this effect, I used uh, again a paid plugin from Trap Code uh, Red Giant Mirror. So what it does is basically creates a geometry, a plane, which you can tweak in a specific way. So I created a wireframe using these settings. If you have Red Giant uh, Mirror and you want to do that as well, 
but I'm sure every shot will be different, so you just have to tweak it just a little bit. Then I added the VC color vibrance, a little bit of Gaussian blur, and the optical glow. I also had uh, some image of eyelashes, that's right here, and I create a solid underneath using alpha inverted matte, and then use that whole thing as alpha matte for the trap coat mirror, so it kind of blends, and then you think that there are eyelashes over that effect. I use the spot clone tracker to remove some blemish, so it's not distracting. And then finally, again, the well-known effect for the text. Nothing different from what you've seen before. And then I create an overlay that says Counter Terrorist Win. The screen is just a solid with CC power pin to stretch it to match the display and a little bit of noise. And the final title was a Razer logo. There is a 3D camera which is doing the zoom in, zoom out. We have the logo with optical glow on it. Then we have a logo reflection, which is the same layer, just flipped upside down in 3D. There is a mask on it to give it that faded look. Then I had some texture of a steel and I used it for a compound blur effect, which can use some maps, which gives a texture to that blur. So it's not straight up blurring, but you can get really, really nice results. As you can see, it looks awesome. And it's all done with that compound blur using this map. And I use it as an adjustment layer because I use it both on this logo and it, this is the Razer slogan and I animate one into another using the increased glow by the end of the logo shot and then again really high glow amount and then you can see some scale position keyframes to make the transition complete so yeah that's the whole video in case you're interested i created a course that's designed specifically for filmmakers if you're interested there is a link in the description below but other than that Thanks for watching. Hit me up with any questions you might have and I'll see you in the next one.